Welcome to the BVTV Network, coming from the UK studios of BizVision. I'm your host, Malcolm Gallagher. You don't need me to tell you that these are challenging times for business leaders. You'll know it and be experiencing it. Good, moderate, or perhaps even sadly bad. The thing is, where we are now is never going back to where we were. The world has moved on 10, even 15 years in the last 18 months. And that brings one of the biggest of all challenges for leadership, change. My guest is more than an expert commentator on change. He's a practical doer, walking the walk for many well-known companies. He's co-authored the book, The Pit of Success, How Leaders Adapt, Succeed and Repeat. Please meet one of the most sought after leadership and organizational change consultants in the world and number one Wall Street Journal bestselling author, Dave Jennings. Hello, Dave. Malcolm, pleasure to be with you today. And I'm, I'm in Northeast England. Where about see you then, please? I am in Salt Lake City, uh, right in the Rocky Mountains. And we too, we've had rain for the last few days and we have a bright sunny day. So it's a, a glorious day here. But it's normally excellent weather around there, though, isn't it? It is, but uh, this month is always uh, kind of the, the rainy season, so uh, it goes back and forth. Yeah, yeah. And, and you've told me beforehand, before we came on air, uh, to watch out uh, viewers and listeners, but don't don't make me change your atten- attention to the interview. Watch out for a deer wandering behind you. So. That's right. I am I am three blocks from the uh, forest, so who knows whatever happens. <laughs> All right. Uh, hello, Bambi. Okay. <laughs> Dave, Dave, I'm truly delighted to welcome you to BBTV, today's Leaders Channel. Uh, viewers and listeners, my talk with Dave will be in my usual three-part format, but with a bit of a difference, as you'll see. Part one is called Before We Jump, where I'll ask him about the state of leadership today and its ability to deliver necessary change. In part two, we'll jump into the pit of success and find out what awaits us. And in part three, we'll emerge from the pit, hopefully knowing where and how we'll be making that important difference and change. But first, Dave, tell us, who is Dave Jennings and why do you have this passage, passion for managing change? So as you said, I'm a leadership and change consultant. I live and breathe change. Uh, my passion really started when I was studying for my PhD. I did research on change resilience. And in there, our research showed that you really can learn to adapt and you can sustain that. And so it's just something that is so teachable, so learnable, uh, that that excites me. And as I've worked with leaders in various companies, I've watched them struggle with change and, you know, personally and and also for their organization. And I really want them to know that they do not have to carry this burden. Uh, You can really uh, have your load lightened as you understand how to embrace change and how to lead it. Mm. I I always remember uh, that uh, cartoon. Uh, I, I've got a strange sense of humor, Dave. Where you know that um, who's voting for change, and they all put their hands. Everybody puts their <laughs> hand up, and the other one says, "Now who's going to do it?" And nobody puts their right. hand up. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, I, I tease leaders about that. That they're all willing to say, "Hey, you guys need to change." But how many of the leaders are willing to change? And I I, I pick on them. I make I, I you know I, I kind of poke a little, but. That's just the reality of change. Good, normal people believe in it and have a hard time doing it. That is all of us. Mm, We we all struggle. Yeah. Yeah, You know, my my wife talks about change where she'll say, I want that chair moved to there and we'll move that one to there. That's the change, you know. That's not really change, is it? (laughs) So no, well, uh, we, uh, my wife and I, joke about the same thing in the in the house of moving the furniture. Uh, we call it the illusion of progress. Right. If you just move the furniture around, you can feel like you have a new house, right? Yeah, yeah. But often it ends up, by the way, Dave, back where it was beforehand. But don't tell her that, will you? <laughs> right. Dave. Dave, time for part one. And and sorry, but I'm focusing all my questions around the pit. This part of is before we jump into the pit, you work around the world. What do you think is the state of leadership in today's leaders, especially in their ability to deliver change in these uncertain times? Are they more agile than pre-pandemic leaders or just the same people with a little adaptation? 
So, well, I'd like to, you know, say it's this way, but it's a really individual question you asked. There are some leaders who definitely have emerged and seen uh, their life and uh, the life of their organization and their people differently. And there are others that got through by just working harder and working harder and doing more of the same. So there is not a, a one size fits all uh, statement for that. I think the main thing though is around the world, people are fatigued. Uh, mm. Leaders and the people they lead are just fatigued. And so our challenge as leaders is to realize that everyone is, is challenged right now and we need to uh, take the time to pull back and really clarify where we're going and why we're going there. And if that's the, that would be the biggest message I, I think I could give to all leaders is in the past, setting direction was difficult. I think now in a time of fatigue where we're languishing and people are just unsure, You've got to be far more clear about where we're going and why, and to be more intentional in one-on-one -on -one conversations, planning that out. What used to happen at the water cooler isn't. Mm. The ability for leaders to realize my job, you know, it's always been around clarifying where we're going, but I've got to now make time, schedule time, and do it again and again and again. Do you think you've got to deliver that uh, vision or where we're going to in a different way. Uh, you know, in the past, it was almost like Moses sending down the tablets of stone from leaders. You know, they sit in their, their bo well, little box and send out the emails. And I would argue that the good leaders uh, never relied just on that even before. Uh, mm. So, yes. I, and I think that's the error we all make is that, hey, I've said we're going here. Why isn't everybody going there? Well, it's because it's hard to change. Our mind can say, oh, yeah, I get it, and I don't mm. change. It's like me with potato chips versus an apple. You know, given a choice, I kind of go for the potato chips, <laughs> even though I know the apple would be more satisfying. And when it comes to great ideas at work, it's no difference. We'd like to go for the apple, but eh, the potato chips are working okay for me. Mm. So leaders have to really, really uh, include people more in the discussion, get more into the why. If 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 I could really push leaders to take more time for a conversation of why we're going there. One, where are we going, but why? What's pushed us there? What are the opportunities? What are the limitations? Include in the conversation uh, and break down the wall. I see a real wall from the, uh, the VP level down. Yeah. If I'm, you know, I'm with the execs and we're talking and they're all like, yeah, 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 we're, we're, they're agreed. I then go into the lower levels of the organization. I say, where are we going? They're like, I don't know. And so the ability to restate and restate and have conversations is, is central because the middle is going to be doing what they know how to do because that is the most logical thing to do. The new change is not logical yet. Right. Our job okay. is, is to make it logical. Yeah. Do, do you think then that people, uh, that leaders need to adapt some new skills. For example, I've found that um, many of them are di find it difficult to be compassionate in their, in their new work, you know, understanding that uh, considerate about mental health and, and issues right. like that, which they've never had to, to do in the past, have they? Not, not, well, I would argue again that the good leaders always were, all mm. right? So the good leaders were always thinking about the person and of course, you've got to clarify, we got to go here. There is still a demand, but just because we have a demand doesn't mean you're not a person. Uh, I, I literally spend a, a lot of my time just poking on leaders on how they listen and how they receive feedback. Mm. Uh, before the pandemic, it was big. And now it's even bigger for someone to come to you and say, hey, I disagree with X. You want as a leader to say, tell me about that. Help me understand what you're seeing that I'm not seeing. If more leaders would take the time to hear the story that, they're, that uh, their people are going through, they could better address it. And, and maybe they, they need to change, but taking time and, and compassion isn't about becoming a therapist. It's just about hearing people and, and knowing the story behind their story. Mm. If they take the time for that, just, hey, say more about what you're thinking. In fact, interviewers like yourself, you're pros at this. All right. And you're just really good at saying, hey, can you tell me more about that? That mm. is what a leader should be doing. 
Yeah. And, and I suppose that you've just hit it right on the head of, uh, before there about the art of listening, isn't it? You know, somebody told me years ago, Malcolm, you got two ears and one mouth. Use them in that order. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Dave, before we continue to part two, let me just remind viewers and listeners of your website URL, your website address, which is now viewers, obviously you can see it on the screen behind me there, but for listeners, let me spell it out. It's all the W's, www dot Dave, D-A-V-E, Jennings, spelled J-E-N-N-I-N-X, uh, J-G-S, yeah, DaveJennings.com. I better do that again, Dave, hadn't I? As I'm saying there, people are saying, I'm trying to write this down, Malcolm, you're spelling it wrong. It's all the W's, Dave Jennings, J-E-N-N-I-N-G-S.com. Do you think we got that across there, Dave? I hope so, yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, do go there and explore the today's latest solutions that Dave offers. And his book um, is called, and again, you can see the image behind me, The Pit of Success, How Leaders Adapt, Succeed, and Repeat. And it's published soon by Morgan James Publishing. What's the date of publishing, by the way, Dave? The uh, 17th of August. It oh! Will be available right. on all the major uh, sources. Uh, it's already available via ebook. Uh, but the uh, the the soft copy, the paperback copy, comes out on the seventeenth. The seventeenth, right? I should remember that. It's the day after my thirty fifth wedding anniversary. Tick. Right. Excellent, day. excellent uh, uh, anniversary gift. No, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, although my wife might say she didn't, did you jump, did jump into the pit? Was it the pit of success? No, Dave. Let's start to live the book in part two, which is called jump into the pit. I know, I know. Let's hope it's not an Indiana Jones pit full of snakes. Right. What's awaiting us as we jump into the pit of success? You say how leaders adapt, succeed, repeat. Why those three words? What's the learning? And give us some reasons to want to jump into the pit. So uh, let's start just with the, the definition of the pit of success. Oops. And then we'll... Uh... We'll get on to the, to the three words that the pit of success, the idea of it is that everything you want to accomplish uh, in the future is a future expertise. And before that future expertise is this pit of success, which is an area that you don't know how to do. It's mm -hmm. some area where the demands are greater than your experience. Mm -hmm. And whatever you want to grow in, you're going to have to do something beyond your experience. Now, the most logical thing to do is to see something beyond your experience and go, hey, I like that. I'm going back home to my current expertise. Normal, logical behavior for us to go back and do what we do best. Our challenge then is to embrace this pit, embrace this unknown. And I, I call it a pit of success because one, it is dark. You do not have answers. You do not know how to manage this space. You've never been here before. So yes, it is a pit, but it's not a pit of despair. Absolutely not. And I think we get in trouble when we define demands as despair because mm. our brain is really sensitive to those words. It is a pit of success because if you're willing to go through this not knowing, this doubt, this questioning yourself, if you're willing to go through that, you can achieve any new expertise. And there's the freedom is, ah, when I start embracing the pit and I stop seeing all these things as a sign of that I'm not good enough, you're now free. And so mm. that's the, the definition of the pit is, is that space between your current and fewer future expertise. Before I go on to the other thing about the three words, did any question or comment there? No, I, I've got you. That's very clear. I, I'm, okay. I'm, yeah, it's just all exciting. <laughs> so the, the idea then of adapt, succeed and repeat, you're going to go into the pit. Mm -hmm. You're going to struggle. You will not have answers. You're not supposed to have answers. You've never been here before. Mm. You could feel lost. You could, uh, you're going to have a hard time making decisions. You're going to go through that. And then you're going to come up higher and you're going to gain new skills. You're going to be able to do things you could never do before. And you're going to enjoy that. That new expertise is going to be awesome. You're going to be more capable. Then life is going to throw something at you. Work is going to throw something mm -hmm. at you. Or you may seek some new demand yourself, maybe a promotion, maybe a location change. And so it could be imposed on you or you could choose it, but you're going to go into another pit. So you have to adapt, you have to succeed, and then you're going to repeat it. And that 
is a life of progress. And that's yeah. what's so fun about it. When we embrace the pit, all the confusion is no longer what's matter with what's the matter with me. It's a hey, oh wow, I get to learn something new. And yeah, I'm gonna struggle. And that is normal. That mm. is one thing I want to push. It is normal to be lost and confused when facing a pit of success. Mm. Do, you, do you think, you know, when you get to the repeat, and I, I totally take that, you know, it was the, always the best ever sales thing, wasn't it? Wash once and repeat, you know. Yes. Um, but can you tell me, uh, do you think you've got to have an awareness of what you've actually done to make the, the success rather than just go through the motions again? I think when you take stock that, oh, I've benefited, I've grown, you now have a base to draw from. Mm -hmm. So if you go, oh, no, here's another thing, then you're, it's more of a burden. But if you realize, oh, I learned a new skill, I would not have gained that skill without having faced that challenge. Now I can use that new skill as I go in and help, it'll help me to figure things out. But I also am going to have to let go of some skills. Because particularly as leaders, we go through a process of letting go of what got us here and added, adding new skills. Excellent. Yeah. Dave, let's move to part three. And I want those today's leaders who have jumped into the pit of success with you to see the value for themselves they will have gained from doing so. Now, what do you think the outcome of the pit visit will be and what can be the impact by today's leaders who have emerged from the pit. And I say that because it's easy to identify outcomes, but impact is where the true value lies, isn't it? So absolutely. And I, you know, I really think that when you embrace the pit and your mindset becomes one of that is normal and I'm okay, you treat change differently. Rather than every change being a ominous thing, every change is a, it's a problem to solve. That's it. Mm. It's no longer a test. It's simply a problem. And it's like, ah, I just got to figure solve for X, right? I just need to figure out what that is and do that. And so one, when you get a mindset around that's normal, you're going to have more confidence when you're lost because you will be lost. You're also going to steady the ship for all your people. One thing I hear repeatedly is we have leaders, these are my clients talking, we have leaders who are making it harder for their people because they're, they're basically you know, saying the sky is falling. And so as leaders realize that, hey, it's just a pit, it's just a thing we figure out, they're able to calm others. Then as they're able to do that and they normalize the pit of the success, they also help their leaders to realize uh, and that they're all their people to realize, oh, I can go through this. Uh, at one organization I was at, the president told me that uh, several months after we had worked on this, that he would go into various people's office and he would see the pit of success drawn on the wall. He could tell that they were talking about it. And the leader was helping their people understand it's just part of the process. It's just part of our, our learning curve. And so I think the real impact that we have is we, we create an organization that is change ready, not just for the moment, but for ongoing change. Excellent. Yeah. I, I really like the, the concept of the pit of success because I think it can uh, generate a lot of dialogue as well amongst team members, yes. can't it? Yes, absolutely. And it's to say, hey, I, for me, this is new. And uh, you know, I'll have leaders come back uh, you know, years later and say, hey, Dave, I'm in another pit. And they <laughs> now they just it's just like, oh, yeah, I just I'm just in a new challenge. And it's just accepting. And and as they pass that on to their team members, there's a whole mindset that change is not the enemy. Hmm. It is something we can use and we can use it repeatedly. Yeah, it's it's what meant to do. Our brains are meant to rewire. And let's let's do what we're meant to do. Yeah, excellent. Oh, sadly, I'm going to be leaving you, but uh, too many leaders think we're just having a hiccup in business at the moment and that soon things will be back to normal. I suggest those leaders will soon have a declining business. This new and altered world is far more demanding than that, as I trust you've learned today from my guest, Dave Jennings, co-author of The Pit of Success, How Leaders Succeed and Repeat. Thanks, Dave, for a stimulating interview. It's been a pleasure, Malcolm. Have a great day.